Hey, shitheads! Welcome to Cyborg New Gods. I'm your Game Master, Dale, and I'm gonna be taking you dreckheads, you gutter punks, on a trip through the worst city in the world. And maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to do some good in this shithole. This is a Cyborg actual play podcast using the Cyborg OSR rules. Available on DriveThruRPG or from Free League Publishing. Let's get right into it. Ah, oh, you punks make me so sick! So you finished one job, one job, and you got it off without a hitch, and suddenly you think you're riding on top of the world. But Psy doesn't work like that. Psy only allows little temporary victories. It's not long before reality comes back, hits you in the face. And pushes you back down in the gutter where you all belong. We're back in Cyborg New Gods. And as we open this week, we were once again sitting at the bar at the Bent Nail, Ivan's humble establishment in the Ports District of Psy, the impromptu entertainment capital of Psy's true residence. The building is blaring with some sort of Eastern European new rock and you may, as you sit and wait for Ivan to notice you, turn his attention away from the group of barely teenaged punk rockers on the other side of the bar and welcome you, you make yourselves comfortable and greet each other. Spend a few seconds shooting the ship. It's been approximately two weeks since you completed the job for Dr. Tate. And in this time, it's been nice to have enough money on your cred sticks to pay the rent. But it's not enough to live off, not for very long. And so when you receive the call on your retina implants from Ivan telling you to get down to the bent nail tonight for another job you jumped at the chance and here you are finally Ivan finishes pouring the drinks for his new trendy clientele he looks over his shoulder and sees you waiting. He smiles, shooting a broad, toothy grin in your direction. He brushes his bushy hair out of his face, straightens his long beard, and makes his way over. <laughs> and here you are! <laughs> Haven't seen her hide nor hair of you for the last two weeks. What, you think you're some sort of big shots because you helped Dr. Tate get that clinic in the slums? Didn't even bother paying your friend Ivan a visit? <laughs> <laughs> here you are and here we be, Ivan. Ah, you know how it is, things get away from you. The day-to-day -day grind takes us all, eh? But we wouldn't forget about you. How could we? Ivan, baby, I'm sorry I didn't call, but I've been busy, all right? 
I mean, it stopped by every now and then if you had uh, slightly more refined drinks and uh, changed up the music a little at least. Yeah, you gotta refine your drinks, Ivan. Ivan. Ivan bears his teeth, growling. And he reaches for the unlabeled bottle of new vodka and pours each of you a shot, slamming the glass down on the bar. And he says, You know what? You always make fun of my drinks, Mr. Hill's big shot. But you never complain when I give it to you for free and you knock it down like a champ. Oh, is, is that what was happening? I... Sure, of course. Definitely drinking it down, of course. And then Thank he, you, generosity. Then he folds his arms, leans back against the drinks cabinet, his face glowing purple in the neon light, and he narrows his eyes, waiting for you to down the shot. Uh, Jonathan picks out a pen from his pocket and gently prods the shot glass and slides it away from himself. And Kitty immediately grabs it and knocks it back. Ah, you always serve the finest rum, Ivan. You know that. Ah. Who cares if not everyone can handle their ration? Bah! And of course, as usual, it is the animatronic cat. Who knows what's up? <laughs> well, look. As you guess, this isn't a social call. I didn't bloody here call you here to talk. To shoot the shit. I got another job for you. Another one from Dr. Tate. He was quite happy with what you did last time. And he said he wants you back again, specifically you, none of my other regulars, so you must have impressed him. He's got that place in the slums up and running. He's running a nice side business installing Chrome, but he says he hasn't been able to do as much as he's wanted to. Apparently it's been quite hard to get good medicine and so he has something he would like you to do and knowing that you do a good job I managed to talk him up a bit and get you 500 off your debts and 200 credits in your pocket hmm. My, well, that's uh, very generous of him why do I get the feeling that we're going to be ensuring something falls off a corporate truck somewhere? <laughs> hey, you read oh. my mind. Uh, he so, gave me... Go ahead, Kitty. Piracy? I suppose you could could call it piracy. <laughs> uh, Tate gave me the skinny. Apparently, the Virid Vipers have a shipment of some prime corp tier medicine coming through one of their drug dens in Central. Now he said you pay him a visit, he'll give you the location, but he did tell me to warn you up front you're gonna be fucking with the Vipers on this one, and well, there's a chance you might make yourself some powerful enemies. So, if you don't think this is for you, Tell me now, and I'll, uh... He looks over his shoulder at the teeny punk rockers who are banging their heads to the new rock. I'll, uh, I'll have them do it. Oh, yeah, you're... It's a real good bluff, I mean. No, they couldn't do that to him. Not a chance. Uh, they're against yeah. the odds of everything in this city. That and their lads and lasses could be innocent, and you'd be sending them, them to the slaughter. Yep, we'd have to reach down from the goodness of our hearts to save their lives from this entirely hypothetical situation you'd put them in. I think Dr. Tate's the first person in this entire city who's looked out for somebody other than himself. I couldn't send them to do the job. <laughs> yeah, right, for sure. Yeah. 600 creds. 600? 
You're asking me to cut into my finder's fee. Go ahead. You guys, anyone else is better at this job than worse than us? Go ahead for me, ghost. Make a presence persuade check. No worries. Uh... Oh! <laughs> no, that's a two. <laughs> I'm not gonna, not gonna glitch. Five hundred and two hundred in your pocket, and uh, I'll make a deal with you. I'll uninstall the ice I uploaded into the news feed. There, he points at the little screen embedded in the bar. That's as as ever streaming a constant barrage of quote-unquote news and ads. All right, you know I can't resist that. Ah, he He'd winks. be giving you remote control powers. Oh. He I winks and... And with great power. He points his finger no at the screen. Points his finger at the screen okay. and then with his other hand taps his head above his ear and then he looks at you and he says, Eh! It's gone! Go, put one of your uh, anime titty girls on there, or whatever it is you want to do. In a man, Ivan, and just the, the most, like, bizarre AMV YouTube trash you've ever seen starts playing on all the monitors. It's so loud that instantly J-pop drowns out the new rock music and all of the bar's clientele Stop what they're doing and immediately glare in your direction, ghost. Uh, a little, uh, this is uh, the wrong place for that. Yeah, I know. Ivan Shh. nods and he winks. Yeah, what are they going to do? He says, finish your drinks and then uh, why not uh, shuffle off and go see Dr. Tate, you know. Night's young. But time doesn't stand still for any man, nor kitten. And then he turns and heads over to the punk rockers. Folks, Why folks, even... more drinks. Calling me a kitten? That's a silver tongue. You haven't been one of those for years. Yeah. <sighs> you got that and youthful goes... face about you, kitty, he says. And then he turns back to the other clients. She spreads her hands and curtsies. And then looks over to Ghost. What are you doing, Ghost? Always remember, never squeeze the fixer, always squeeze the client. Yeah, I'll keep that in mind. They always got something extra they need doing, and that's when you hit them with the real bargaining. Well, uh, shall we be off? I packed you all lunches. He ooh. pops open the backpack and starts handing out doggy bag brand... Uh, Schnitzel sausage! Von Schnitzel's Red Rockets. <laughs> Complete with mustard and rum butter sauce. You know, two weeks ago I wouldn't have tried these, but um, uh, I think I'm starting to get the idea that you shouldn't ask questions where you get your uh, supplies from. Oh. Same place I always get them from. The dogs no, of this world enough. eat I don't, sentient. Don't need to know anything <laughs> more than that. Uh, I'll eat it, it's alright. They're, they're not bad, actually. Ah, glad you approve. Somebody's got to keep the home fires burning. And as you, uh, as you grab the bags and peer down at the food that Kitty has produced, ads flash up on your retina implants. Bitch burger, bitch burger, because doggy bags been out of business for twenty years. What? Somebody be muscling in on me secret recipes? Well now. That won't stand. And so... Well, let's... Yep. Let's go see what Pete needs. So you step out of the bar into the cold, windy... Neon lit and trash strewed streets of the upper ports. 
paradigm as per usual makes his way to his Harley climbs aboard and doesn't even give you dignify any of your nonsense as he revs the engine and tears off down the street leaving you all to clamber into Jonathan's stolen taxi and tear yeah, off in hot pursuit. I don't entirely blame him for not joining us, but it would be, you know, polite to, you know, spend some time with us once upon a time, once every now and then. Yeah. You've learned that that just ain't paradigm style. And so, you make your way through the ports, cross the bridge over the canal and head down into barnyard fields. The slum, the absolute worst place in the city, save for Ground Zero, of course, marked by crumbling tenement blocks, raggedy Desperate, broken people huddling in the neon-lit doorways of businesses with iron-barred windows. And then you reach Tate's Clinic, the old emergency surgery recording studio. The signs referring to emergency surgery and the Allianson Incorporated logos that emblazoned the facade of the building have been cleared away over the last two weeks. Somehow, Tate's managed to get somebody to not only find an affordable can of paint, but to give the entire building a nice touch-up. It now gleams a deep blue with the word TATES in bright yellow text emblazoned above the front entrance. And a surprise, somebody ain't added an in in there yet. Give him time. <laughs> a neon light blinks in one of the windows on and off cheap healthcare for the masses free and discounted medicine and chrome no insurance required each time the words blink out they're replaced with a winky face emoji almost poking fun at the corporations that would squeeze the people of this district for everything they're worth, even though that's not much at all. So you park in the parking lot out the front, the place that just two weeks ago was strewn with trash and debris that you had to sneak through. That's now open and clear and there are even other vehicles parked in the spots alongside you and then you head inside and the old sound stage and production room has been converted into a vast reception lobby it's been outlined with plastic seats and several of Barnyard Field's residents are huddled in the seats. A couple of them glance up at you with bleary eyes as you enter and then quickly look away, once again escaping into their own thoughts. Here and there around the room, Members of the Raptors gang stand at attention. It seems that Tate's made quite a good arrangement with them as they end, lend an air of safety. A little bit rough around the edges perhaps, but safety nonetheless 
to the establishment. Although it doesn't look like he managed to talk them out of... Talk them into covering up their leather vests, gang symbols, tattoos, piercings and chrome, all of which are displayed prominently. Behind the reception counter sits Brian the Orc, boredly watching some reality TV show on the single screen embedded into the wall beyond the lobby. He looks away from it as you approach and smiles and he says, ah, so sweet security gig you got us. Sure, pay is good. All we gotta do is stand around. Don't have to actually do any work, but... And, and the digs in the basement. Oh, much better than what we were dealing with before in amongst all that... All those cameras and all that sound equipment. But the docs got me working reception. Well, with your natural charisma and... In natural beauty, it is only a good fit for you, you cutie. Come here. Give me a hug. And I'll leap on them. <laughs> he opens his mouth to protest, but he doesn't have a chance. You leap over the counter, embrace him in your arms, and then... After a few seconds, he relents, slapping your back with a big, beefy hand. <laughs> you joined the crew, and don't think I'll be forgetting that. You're a pal. Then the magnet back onto the counter. <laughs> I was gonna say, just before you let go, you see the magnet coil on his arm begin to vibrate. A not so subtle warning that you'd best let go before he flings you across the room. And so you step away. The coil anyway, we the coil an vibrates once more and then stops. Brian nods, satisfied, and he says, yeah, you got an appointment, uh, go on, head into the dark's office, and he gestures with his thumb towards the old soundstage slash operating theatre where the doorway to Tate's office stands open, bright light spilling out from within. Uh, you, shall we? Do you head in? to the office and Tate whirls around in his office chair looking up from the terminal screen. The cold blue light from the screen illuminates his face. You notice that a couple of the lines around his eyes are gone. Now that he's got a place to call his own He probably has far less weight on his shoulders. One problem dealt with. But this is Sai, and where one problem's dealt with, there's 99 more. And in other ways, he looks just as tired and overworked as ever. His graying black hair all dishevelled around his face, and the lenses of his glasses covered in grime and fingerprints. Ah. Just on time. I was gonna have to have Brian call to remind you about your appointment, he says. He quickly whirls around, slams his index finger on a button on the keyboard and the file that he was looking at on the screen blinks away, replaced with an Alliance and Incorporated logo that serves as a screensaver. So, Ivan, fill you in, he says, leaning back in his chair, crossing his arms. You need drugs and the Vipers have them. Beyond that, little. Yeah. So... He did keep it strangely vague, actually, now that you mention it. Well, that's because I didn't give him all the skinny, did I? See, he's a good fixer and all, but I've learned in all my years that if you 
Well, you know, I'll put it this way. Trust is hard come by in this city. You've earned my trust, but Ivan hasn't. So I told him what he needed to know. Enough to get you to take the job and get over here post haste. That's probably wise, actually. I, I don't know if you've ever seen him work, but he does, like, bellow information from the top of his lungs in the middle of the room. Indeed, and the state of his bar, he says. He looks at you, Jonathan. Well, you're from the medical profession. The hygiene, or, or the, the lack of it there. Glasses all covered in muck and grime, dust all over the stools and the bar. Surprised people aren't getting tetanus just by drinking their shots, if you know what I mean. The, the grime be part of the bar's character. Admittedly, it's got enough for a three-act play, but still. Fair yeah. enough. Wouldn't be the same if we're clean. Yeah, it might be actually hospitable. Who wants that? Well, I'll admit, right. I've seen worse places, he says, nodding. So... Let's get down to business then. The night's young, and I'm sure you'll want to get started right away. Oh, before we begin, uh, anyone need a quick checkup? Anyone got some Chrome they want to install? Remember, you're my friends, and friends get mates rates. I wish, but not right now. Fair enough. Fair enough. He looks over at Paradigm. How's the nano treating you? Your skin's looking a bit paler since last time. Uh, you haven't been putting things in that navel mouth that you shouldn't, have you? Uh, nothing I shouldn't. Just be careful, okay? Look. Yeah. I've seen blokes with the nanos in a lot worse shape than you are. And jury's still out on whether it's something that happens inevitably or if it's something that happens because you rile the nanos up or something like that. So, you know, just because that mouth gets a kick out of chomping on stuff that the rest of us would just look at and walk past doesn't mean you should be putting everything you find on the street in there. Also, I hope you've been brushing the teeth on that thing, because, you know, tooth infection down there, you're fucked. Shite, never even thought of that. Jonathan just lets out a little Thanks. chuckle. <laughs> I do what I can with what I have. <sighs> he yeah. sighs. You haven't something been... about messing with the vipers. <laughs> something about messing with the vipers, right. So, look. I need to get some red juice and some adrenochrome HST, alright? Maybe a bit of O-sleep and, you know, some... Sunset Chalk and Vert or some of the more intrusive surgeries. And, well, prices on the street are struth through the bloody roof. So, I've had my ear to the ground. I've tapped a couple of my old contacts from the court. And it looks like the Vipers are doing business in Red Juice and other medical chems. They've been doing it for quite a while. If I had to hazard a guess, I'd say they're probably running middleman for one of the corps. ACGS, TG Labs, maybe even Alliance. And somebody's paying good cash. The Vipers are working with some of the nomad crews out of town to get this shit in and then they're passing it along well I figure 
you can knock one of those shipments for me, then I should have enough to last a couple of months. I've narrowed down where the stuff is likely to be, but you'll have to take it from there. I've been told through my contacts that the shipments are going through a Viper drug den based out of an old block of flats in South Central, specifically the Undershon district. You know that 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 glimmering mecca of materialism and consumption they got under the ocean there, on the ocean floor, under the waves. The only light that goes that deep is the neon, of course, and where there's no natural light, the dark things fester, which means people like the vipers have got quite a hold on the area. They're a sec corpse, of, co of course, but they're all in the viper's pocket. So, word to the wise right now, you'd better expect trouble on this one. Keep your wits about you and be prepared for trouble at all times. Any questions? Uh, yeah, uh, speaking of trouble, um... Back when I worked with TG Labs, there were rumours that flew around all the time about shipments that got heisted and how much the crews loved uh, swiping in, uh, swooping in at the last moment and uh, killing everyone and bathing in their blood and all sorts of other horrible things uh, for people who stole them. Uh, we're not going to be heisting tracked goods, are we? Well, at this he smiles and he looks over at Ghost and he says, Oh, well, that'll be your Decker's job, won't it? Find out if they're being tracked, and uh, if so, hack into the system and remove the information. Hey, he holds up his hands. It's not like I'm sending you into a setup or anything. If that stuff's tracked and you bring it back here, there'll be corpo assassins within 24 hours to put a bullet in my head. And then ours next, yes. Uh, is our decker up to it? I mean, I'll have to be. Uh, that's oh, doctor. Great. Me, doctor. I might want to point out something here if you'd be amenable to letting me bend your ear. We, run, we do be running a significant risk with this here operation that we'll be going up against the Vipers who have a fair about not a memory whom we've already cheesed all of it, and possibly a corp behind them back at them so I'm I may be willing to do it but I'd be thinking after hearing what Ivan's terms were I'd be thinking you might be able to sweeten the deal just a mite 500 plus 200 in your pockets ain't enough for you <sighs> He sighs. Go ahead. I mean, and... if it were just the vipers, but there'd be uh, there back unknown backers behind there. Is what I'm saying. You sure you can't sweeten the deal for the mates who went above and beyond for you? Go ahead and make me a presence persuade check. All right. So that'll be an eighteen. Eighteen. Brushes his hand in the air. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. Good point. Good point. Well taken. He whirls around. And his fingers glide across the keyboard of the terminal. The Alliance and logo disappears. And a sequence of numbers begins to scroll up the screen. Hmm. Yeah. All right. I can shove some of what I was meant to give that guy over here here and slams his finger down on the enter button and 100 credits are immediately deposited deposited into your accounts that'll do it Kidding thank grand. you all right 
If you got any more deets, we'll take it now. So, dresses and unders, John, you said? Yep. Don't know where exactly. That's where you're going to have to do some legwork. And as I said, don't be fooled by the glitz and the glamour and the neon lights and the fact that the whole thing's on the bloody ocean floor. It's crawling with gang goons and bent sec corpse, so... Wits about you. No one, no one will miss. Good. We'll keep be keeping our eyes peeled. Alright, if there's nothing else, uh, I have to install uh, a shunt in somebody's catheter. So, he stands up and looks towards the door. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, actually, um, how are you affording all this? Like, I, I saw on the signs outside, you're offering discount, free healthcare, you've renovated the entire place. How are you staying afloat? I'd like you, Jonathan, to make me a presence persuade check. Oh, you might have to use the Albert Rodeo dice roller because I'm not sure the bottom oh, here have to. is. Yeah, alright, I'll just grab my actual dice. Oh, right. your actual dice, yeah. He smiles and he just says. Uh, oh, that's 18. 18. Severance package, he says. When I left the corp, I, uh. Well, I got a damn big payout and I might have took some stuff with me. Look, you remember. Remember when you, we met in the club and the Vipers sent some goons to knock me off? There's a bit of a story there. Right, it's all starting to add up. I'll tell you sometime. But there's a reason I chose the Vipers to knock off for this one, because I figure they already hate me, so what's the harm in poking the hornet's nest a bit more? <laughs> I'd be liking that logic. I won't, I won't bite off here any further. Uh, we should catch up for drinks sometime. It's somewhere a bit nicer than Ivan's. Yeah. Ah, look, I know a place in one of the in-betweens. Not as fancy as what you're used to in the hills, but a damn sight better than Ivan's. Look, get these drugs back to me. And stay alive. And we'll go have a drink to celebrate. Now. All right, you've got yourself a deal. He claps his hands together. Be off with you. I pride myself on not making people wait. And my next appointment is he glances at the little blinking green screen on his wrist. Five minutes late at this point. Yarr. Now we best go let the fella get, let you insert that there catheter. <laughs> it is a ticklish business. And it is. Especially when you don't have any bloody vert to stop them from thrashing around and screaming. Unless you're using Alliance and brand catheters, a smooth glide with every slot. No way that sponsors cancelled about 25 years back. Never mind. <laughs> oh, don't, don't do that again. Please. <laughs> do what? Blinks innocently. Do what? Oh, God. Uh Let's talk later, right? As you step, oh, okay. as you start to make your way out of the office, as if tempted, as if fate is listening and hears Kitty's words, an ad for that specific brand of catheter shunts begins to blink on your retinal display, advertising free with suitable insurance. Please read the fine terms. Adding that to the block list. You wouldn't put anything just up there, would you? Trust Alliance. <laughs> and so, you're off. You alight on your vehicles, and leave the ports behind. You drive from the heart of the slums, 
surrounded by crumbling concrete buildings and the sounds of poverty and desperation. And as you drive through the narrow winding streets, the buildings gradually become taller and more imposing. The sounds of the city become louder, the streets become more congested. Neon lights and holographic advertisements flash overhead and the pulse of the city can be felt in the air. Eventually, you cross one of Sai's many waterlogged canals and emerge into the vibrant downtown district of North Central where skyscrapers loom overhead and the streets are filled with people hurrying about their business. The buildings are sleek and futuristic and the sounds of technology and commerce fill the air. It's here, most of all, that you can see the full contrast between the poverty of the slums and the wealth and excess of the city's heart. As you're passing through the border that leads, the border that separates the ports from South Central, past the Omos monolith, a grand pointed black edifice that pierces the sky, a monument to the supremacy of the Omos Corporation which filed for bankruptcy shortly after the monument's completion and collapsed, leaving this edifice as the only evidence that it ever existed. Your heart sink. At the end of the road, right at the edge of an intersection, A big metal archway has been erected over the road and as cars glide underneath, beams of blue light flash, blinking, scanning the cars as they pass through, making sure that they're supposed to be here. It's a security checkpoint, as you probably should have expected moving into this part of the city. And that's when you realise, Paradigm, your Harley is from Ground Zero. It's so old that it was never even hooked up with an identifier chip. And you haven't been game enough to try to take it through a security checkpoint since you've got it up and running. You literally have no idea what will happen, whether the checkpoint just won't register its presence, or whether it will detect that something is wrong and call the sec corps to swarm upon you. Meanwhile, Jonathan, you look up at the taxi license wedged into the little slot above the sun visor. The name that's written on it is not your name. And the mug that's grinning back at you is certainly not your face. Your taxi is stolen. And it's probably in the set corpse database registered flagged as a stolen vehicle you drive through that arch the light's gonna blink bright red and cops are gonna be on you like flies on shit uh as they approach the intersection um jonathan slows down the car and pulls it over to um the gutter and uh turns around to face everyone in the car uh Look, I, I know I said this, um, this car's been retrofitted and it's my personal little ambulance and it's all, all up to my own personal code and all that sort of thing, but 
It is a little bit um, stolen. Oh. All right. Yeah. And you pirated it properly. Was that was that meant to be not obvious? <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Um, uh, he pulls out a, that pen from earlier from his pocket and uh, gestures towards the blue uh, illuminated street uh, where the security checkpoint is. Oh, that do be pretty. Uh, yes, nice it's pretty. And also, going through there is most likely going to get us killed. Oh, well, we shouldn't do that then. No, we, we shouldn't. Unless um, Ghost here has some ideas, I think we might have to go the long way around, or so if there is no long way around, try to... I mean, I might be able to spoof, like, an ID or something, I don't know. Uh, do you think you could try well, it? Uh, I'd prefer not to walk, especially in this city. I'll let you know, Ghost, uh... it won't be trivial. This is not the, uh, biometric scanner in front of a nightclub. This is sec corp security oh, checkpoint. There will almost certainly be ice in this thing. Kitty raises a hand. Ah, you know, since we're going to be a robbing them of drugs, why don't we just pirate one of their vehicles? Walking on foot, come out with more vehicles than we started with. Uh, how far Ooh, away are we from our destination? So you're right on the very edge of North Central. You're still going to pass through this whole district before you get to Anderson. You could walk if you wanted to do nothing but walk for the rest of the night, but there is public or transport. Could, or we could call Elite Cab. You could call Elite I Cab, was thinking... a Super Uber. You could hop on yeah. one of the monorails and have it carry monorail. you down into Undershon. I was thinking less hacking their, um, their tech and more spoofing uh, an ID for the taxi to make it look legitimate to their systems, but doing that all in the own taxi systems. Yep. I mean, yeah. No. I'm going to point out something as a player here. You got copy swappy. You do. You could make a legit vehicle, us look like a legit vehicle, and the legit vehicle trigger the checkpoint. If you want your app through. counter to go up. But it, but Would it, it do is, that? I mean, well, yeah, because you're still using an app, so... No, you I mean, would, would Copy Swappy work? Oh, yeah, that? Copy Swappy would almost certainly work. You could just use Copy Swappy and the security checkpoint would mistake you for any of the other vehicles currently passing through. Sure. All right. Go ahead, make me a knowledge technology check. Uh, Here we go. That's 15. 15, more than enough. So, the chance of failure goes up by plus one for the rest of this day as you unsling your cyber deck this frankenstein monstrosity that was once a Futura 200 slide the copy swappy cartridge into the slot and execute the command the cyber deck whirs as the lights on the security checkpoint glow bright green and then the taxi and the Harley pass through the archway. You all trust Ghost, but just the same. It's Ted striving under the arch. And you half expect that the set corpse were ready for just this kind of situation. But of course they weren't. Copy Swappy is an app that Ghost developed herself. It easily confuses the system and anyone who looks back at the logs output by this checkpoint would see that at exactly 9.17pm, two super ubers pass through the checkpoint on their way to deliver fares. And some innocent guy with a super Uber is going to be getting a his, his door knocked on. <laughs> yeah, but that sounds like a yeah, him but... problem. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> well, 
Good work, it's Ghost. Things in this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good work, Ghost. We still might get a chance to do some piracy. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see. Oh, there's definitely going to be piracy when you get to the place, but... <laughs> so... You pass through North Central, staying with the traffic, and before long, you pass through the big, big glass tube, a tunnel that descends beneath the inky black surface of Lake Gravel carries you down into the undersea commerce district of Undersom. This be reminding me of Atlantis. <laughs> Only with a few less rodents. Less rodents. Well, we say that. But this is <laughs> Sai. There's probably rodents everywhere. Deeper beneath the surface of the ocean than it has any right to be. The Undersea Commerce District is a sprawling metropolis. Neon lights, towering skyscrapers, and dark alleys. Run by the corpse and patronised by the elites. While at the same time plagued by poverty, crime, and corruption. Putting up a picture in Albert Rodeo of what the Undersea District looks like for you. Is that a manta ray in the sky? Indeed. Mm -hmm. Of course, the Fog. sky... The sky above you is simply the ocean. The surface of the waves above almost look like clouds as they roil in the void far above you and the neon lights below paint them in all sorts of vibrant colours. The streets of Undershon are filled with run-down shops and storefronts, one pop-up kiosk after another turning broad avenues into maze-like lanes, salted by the sights, sounds and smells of biz. Legal labs and factories for black market cybernetic enhancement and untested drugs are commonplace. Despite all the chaos and corruption, the district is a vital centre of commerce, attracting traders and merchants from all over the city, and sometimes even from outside. It is a place where the line between man and machine is blurred, and the only law is the law of the strongest. Somewhere in this maze of corruption and consumption is an old block of flats that serves as the Viper drug den. But you've got to find it, and I'll leave that up to you to figure out how. Uh, well. It's definitely like his first time um, beneath the waves um, in Undershawn uh, for Jonathan and as he drives and um, the neon lights kind of bounce off the car as they go through intersections. Uh, he notices that a number of the shop fronts along the side are very busy and a lot of them are less busy and a little more shady. Yeah. Uh, so he points this out to the crew. Uh, I don't know about any of you, but uh, if I was looking for shady people, I would look for shady people and mm. start asking questions. Someone who's good at streetwise would definitely um, know how to approach the correct people. Yeah, uh, good eye, actually. Uh, Kitty, you don't seem to have any problems um, asking strange questions in strange ways. Uh, I do be gregarious, but I I've got must admit I'm a bit of a stranger in a strange land here. Uh, even mm. among the world of giants, it's a part of the world I ain't explored yet. So All good to me, I can ask around. <laughs> oh, yeah, by all means. Anybody Probably be a little please. less memorable than me do. In fact, you seem to be a bit less memorable in general, Ghost. It is a neat trick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty hard to forget you. Yeah, yeah, well, she's an animatronic cat. But it's not hard to forget Arr. Ghost either. 
so you slide in your, your vehicles into some parking spots by the nearby curb, kill the engines, and step out on to the rubbish encrusted streets. I uh, as they yep. um, sorry, as they hop out of the car, uh, Jonathan heads to the boot and um, uh, opens up a little compartment full of all these emergency supplies that one might need, and pulls out a little rubber poncho about the uh, the size that you probably give like a twelve year old child, and gives it to Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> you bought me a gift. You get a rug up uh, here. Probably, it's not explicitly it's for you. Size, you know, she's like a ball joint dog. Uh, okay. It's not exactly for you, but uh, if you want to keep a low profile and keep that um, face oh. a little bit more hidden. Of course, I'll like be in disguise. Anyway. Kitty removes her tricorn hat, revealing a glittering mane of crystals going down into her back before she flips the poncho bit up. Oh my god, she's bedazzled. <laughs> <laughs> So as Kitty slips the poncho on, Ghost and Paradigm start making their way down the street, scanning the makeshift market stalls and the shop fronts, looking for a promising mark. Eventually they see one and they beckon Jonathan and Kitty over and you join Ghost and Paradigm standing in front of a makeshift market stall on the bustling street. The stall is cobbled together from scavenged materials and is staffed by a tired looking vendor. The vendor is selling old canned food, the contents long past their expiration date. The cans are dented and rust covered, the labels barely readable. Despite their less than appealing appearance, a small crowd of shoppers has gathered looking for anything they can afford to buy. The vendor, a hunchbacked, dishevelled looking middle-aged man with long blonde hair, is bargaining with a customer, gesturing wildly and shouting to be heard over the noise of the street. The market stalls surrounded by the flashing lights and towering buildings of Underjon, symbol of the desperation and poverty existing simultaneously alongside wealth and excess. And I'd like somebody to go ahead and make a presence streetwise check for me. Or yeah, a knowledge I'm... streetwise, either one. That I'll be doing. Um... That's 20. 20. So, Ghost, you hold up your hand, telling the others to follow your lead, and then you stand beside the throng of customers, just watching them come and go for a moment. And most of them gaze at the canned goods. Some of them lift one of the cans from the basket, slide a cred chip over to the vendor and then turn and leave. But then you see a customer, a woman with a nose ring and long red hair wearing a leather jacket, approach the vendor, narrowing your eyes like a hawk. You watch as she quickly flashes a gang sign to the vendor. Only visible for a brief second, just long enough for him to register it. Then he smiles, begins to rifle through the rusted cans and hands her a specific one. She nods, slides him a cred stick and walks away. And so, Ghost, you then step forward, gesturing for the others to follow you. You push through the customers, walk up to the vendor, and flash the same sign that you saw the woman make. The vendor raises an eyebrow. He hasn't seen you before, but he doesn't want to ask questions. 
So he rifles through the cans, extracts one from the bottom of the stack, and hands it to you. The faded label claims that the can holds string beans. The vendor smiles and looks at you expectantly. Okay. Um, I didn't see the girl do anything before no. she left. She just gave him a cred stick and then left. Yeah, I'm just gonna... Oh. Do I have any inclination of how much he might be owed? Um, well, <laughs> it depends. I suppose you could quickly try and hack his retinal implant and see if he has a record of how much he was paid in the last transaction. Otherwise, you just have to guess. Or you could open the can, check what's inside, and give him what you think it's worth, but he might not take kindly to you doing that in plain view of everyone. Okay, um... Would he immediately know how much he's been given if I handed him a stick? Yeah, the number would basically flash up right in his view and say, This amount of credits was deposited by Ghost. Okay. Um, Ghost is going to act like a big shot and they're going to hand them a cred stick. I want to hack it so that it says it's giving them 500. But really, you're giving them... Jack oh shit. Lord. Jack <laughs> shit, nothing. Okay. <laughs> you reach into your coat pocket, pull out an empty cred stick and slide it onto the stall. Go ahead and make me a knowledge technology check. Uh, I'm glitching that to re-roll and I got 16 Oof. Nice. the blonde haired vendor's eyes light up immediately as he reaches out with a ratty hand and snatches the cred stick he shares a toothy grin it's and he says a nice cutie. oh big shot much appreciated <laughs> Yeah, Ghost just winks tell and then sort of Evan, struts off. Tell Evans that you get special treatment. <laughs> oh, you got it. You turn. You take care, man. And walk away, leading the others away from the stall. Step you know, in. if, um, if yep. this Evans uh, gets wind of your face, you will be getting the special treatment. You know that, right? My face, singular. Oh, touche. Uh, that, yeah, touche. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what I thought. You step into a nearby alleyway where no one can see you, and then you all gather around as Ghost unscrews the top of the can. It opens with a loud pop, and inside, it's completely empty save for a slip of paper. Probably not real paper. That stuff's luxury. You'd only find that in the hills. Based on its, based on its bleached white appearance, it's clearly synth paper. But as you extract it, you see that there's something written on it. Handwritten, nonetheless. Two numbers separated by a comma. Uh, what are the numbers? Does anyone have intelligence of plus one or higher? Knowledge plus two? In I've knowledge. got knowledge, oh, yeah. Plus, yeah, two, knowledge yeah. plus two. Yeah, knowledge plus two, yeah. Those could be coordinates. Uh, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's what I was thinking as well. I, didn't, I, wasn't, I, needed, I didn't see the numbers had enough digits. Could be latitude or longitude. Or both, latitude and longitude. Two or whatever sequences your giants of numbers. In your giant perception systems. Alright, go on then, pull out your sextant. <laughs> <laughs> your what? Jonathan, oh, you perv. Come off it. Alright, I'm not the weirdo. May your sextant be a device used for specialized operations. Yeah, I'll bet it is. 
Whatever you be doing in your apartment is your business. But we're on a job. <laughs> on a job. Specialized exactly. operations. Really? Yeah. Neither of you. Ugh. What? Whatever. Uh, please. Let's just let's get on with this. So, if someone would like to compare these coordinates with their knowledge of the city, a knowledge survival check will do it. I don't have survival. I don't either. It's just so straight so knowledge if you like. Might as well just all. Yeah, I can still roll. I've got plus two for knowledge. Go ahead. That's a 21. 21. Yeah. Never mind. All right. So, Ghost, it's not that you know the city. It's just that you you tap a button on the keyboard of your cyber deck and a 3D map of all sci flashes up on your retina display and waving your hands in front of you you scroll towards Undersen, zoom in and narrow down the exact location of these coordinates it's according to your map a health clinic a doctor's clinic about three blocks to the east of here. Oh, you don't say. Well, if we know anything about clinics uh, from our present experience, it could be literally anything. It could be a police station for all we know. I mean, the police could be cutting out the middleman, tis true, but that uh, seems my classy for this. I mean, you know... Ain't exactly the best part of the district, but compared to some, it's, uh... I don't think the police would be blatantly in on it. Oh, no, I mean, uh, repurpose, of course. Like Tate surgery. I mean, they'd probably just be taking their cut and moving on. Oh, 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 gotcha. All right. Well, let's go, uh, walk and have a look-see. Yep, you wanna go there on foot? Don't wanna drive the vehicles. Don't, uh, definitely don't wanna drive the vehicles past there. Probably a good idea. You turn to leave the alleyway, and as you leave the alleyway, gunfire pierces the sounds of commerce. Immediately, the people in the street scream and scatter as bullets rain into the brick wall, just an inch away from Paradigm's head. And then, the assailant, the flying drone, hovers into view. Ah, damn it. Its sleek metal body gleaming in the neon light. Its spherical shape bristling with weapons and high-tech sensors. Mounted on each side are twin machine guns, their barrels spinning as they scan for their targets. The drone's cybernetic systems hum ominously and its powerful engines roar to life as it spots Paradigm and prepares to engage. A klaxon sounds as a second drone zooms out of an alleyway across the road. The two machines communicating, honing in on their target. Relentless hunters and this is when I reveal that prior to this session, I did roll a reputation check. A 16 or higher means someone's coming to collect on the debt. And I met that. And then I rolled a 1d4 to determine whose debt it is. Paradox. Paradigm. The AI cluster to whom you owe your life. And a crap load of creds has sent some drones to take you out. I'd like someone to go ahead and roll a d6 for me, please. In fact, you should do it, Paradigm, since it's your debt. Uh, dude, what the fuck is going on? Ghost, I thought- I thought you had- Kitty's already moving. Yep. Kitty's already- I'm one side. I don't know what that is. Uh, oh, it's a five, so that means we go first, don't we? Um, oh, the checkpoint probably five does mean box. you go first, yeah. 
Dead bot's fine is what it is. Stir your stumps. All right, so Paradigm, just... you may as well go first then. Yeah. Well, let's start by just sort of yelling up to the drones. I've been paying it back, you bastards. <laughs> <laughs> And yet, oh, they don't seem face. to care. One of the drones sees you and a little red light blinks on the front of its spherical body and the machine gun barrels begin to turn. Preparing to fire. Ah, shit. Well, I suppose it's as good a time as any to, to try my new trick. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead and roll for me a presence plus science check to use your nano. Uh, that? Yes, yeah, total 14, so that's 14, success. Yep, that's a success. And I disappear. You disappear using your brand new nano ah! power. The nano bots in your body swarm out of your skin. Oh, max roll, so for six rounds. <laughs> yep, engulfing you in their countenance. To everyone else, you flicker, turn bright silver, and then all of the nanobots cloak and you disappear. All right, good. Kitty, you're up next. So... Are any of the drones near, like, a street light or close to an alley wall or something like that? Roll me a d20. All right, I'll roll you a d20. Oh, you've... Hmm. Oh, you... Let's see. I've ha I figured out how to do the lucky dice one. So I'll do that. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, like, make sure the syntax or whatever is there before you do it. Ah, uh, yes. Two. Oh, that's why it didn't work. Okay. Two. Two. So, so probably not. Yeah, there's zoo. I, I was gonna say if it was eleven or above, fifty-fifty chance. Nope. The two drones are zooming straight across the street, hovering above the cars and the people below. All right, far, too far to get to. Question. Yep. Is it clear that they're still coming after the rest of us, even though Paradise? You don't know. Just, just no. Um. All you can, all you can see is that they seem to be converging on your location, even though they have no possible way to see Paradigm. So Kitty's going to spend the turn scrambling up the nearest fire escape or t hopping between ledges to gain some altitude. Yep. Go ahead, and make me an agility acrobatics check, please. What do you know? I've got that one. <laughs> And that'll be a 14. You leap up onto a nearby dumpster and shimmy up a drain pipe. And then you kneel down behind the waist-high fence on a balcony, watching the drones approach. All Just right. a little closer, you build rats. Just a little closer. Jonathan, what would you like to do? Uh, he's going to drop and um, safety roll behind um, a dumpster and take cover, preparing his weapons just in case. Yep, all right. No roll needed for that. So you're behind cover, which means uh, you will defend at minus two DR. And Ghost, what would you like to do? Uh, first, Ghost is diving just to whatever cover they can get. And then I think they're going to try and just, like, as quickly as possible, like, type up, like, make a, make a really simple virus to see if they can get into uh, into the, the drone system yeah. and spread it, through, spread it through them. All right, so you spend your turn doing that. Go ahead, make for me a knowledge technology roll. And I'll That's, require... Uh, Go ahead. I think it'll pass. That's 21. Oh, yeah, that'll definitely pass. So you wedge next to Jonathan behind behind a trash can. Grab your cyber deck, jack it into the slot underneath your retinal implant and start typing up a simple worm. You'll be ready to unleash in. Go ahead and roll a D3 for me. 
Yes, sir. Uh, three. Oh god. Um, roll d three. One. It'll be ready to unleash in one turn. So next round. Ooh. Very nice. So the drones slide into the alleyway. Their scanners searching for targets. They don't know where Paradigm is exactly. They only know his last known location. So the barrels of the machine guns begin to turn and one of the drones just opens fire on the location where it last saw him. Go ahead, roll yeah. a defense check for me, Paradigm. Yeah. Acrobatic. Yep, DR6. Thank God, because I rolled a five, which means it's a six. <laughs> Lucky man. Yeah. Rolled a five. Well, yeah, it's a DR6, yeah. Yeah, so you just got it. Yeah. It can't see you, but it's spraying <laughs> bullets all through the alleyway, and one of them would have hit you by pure chance if you didn't immediately throw yourself to the asphalt. The second drone scans for targets, and seeing Ghost plugged into her cyber deck, almost sensing what Ghost is about to unleash, the barrel begins to spin and the bullets pepper the ground in a trail towards Ghost. Ghost, go ahead, roll for me. You get minus two DR because you're next to Jonathan. Lovely. Sorry, what's the roll? So you need to make agility. agility and acrobatics if you have it to avoid being shot. And I'm looking for I a 12 or a five. Um, uh, 23. 23, <laughs> yeah. Did I dodge it? You did dodge. You huddle over your cyber oh. deck as the bullets slam into the dumpster, raining you with shards of metal. And now, Paradigm, it's your turn. So they, I'm guessing, are they still up in the air? They haven't, like, still come up down in the air. No, level, have still they? floating up yeah. in the air. Right. I will you know, move around, like, just sort of move from my current position, just still changing positions. And then I'll... I guess I'm just going to try and fire back at the one that fired at me. Yeah, go ahead. Roll to hit it. Make me a presence guns check. <laughs> That's a crit. That's a crit. Mm. <laughs> Nat yeah, twenty. Double damage. Okay, yeah. Roll double the damage. Which is overkill. So I only need it to yeah, it's a DR six to attack as well. While I'm invisible. Yes, it is. Yeah, but you know. Yeah. So it's roll twice on that. Is it roll twice or roll uh, double? Roll, roll, roll once, once double. double. Yep. Um, There's a four shake, so I rolled a one, so it's two. Two points of damage. I believe it also degrades their armor by one. But it does. It does. But yeah. these do not have armor. So the ah. bullets just slam straight into the metal carapace. Sparks fly off as a metal plate dislodges. Kitty, you're up. Excellent. They're in the alley. They are now in the alley. I leap, I leap down, riding the sword down, trying to plant a foot so that I stab it straight through that dislodged plate. Go ahead. Roll. As I try to get on the back of this drone and write it down. Yeah, go ahead to roll for me a... Actually, we'll say... Usually it's strength for melee, but you're leaping from above. We'll go agility acrobatics instead. So that's good, because that makes it a 13. The flyers, these flying drones, they have an ability called quick and janky, which makes them DR 14 to hit. Would you like to glitch? You know, I would. I didn't know the difficulty before I tried this, so... Yeah. I didn't tell you, because... Yeah. That's worse. Yeah. So, you see the drone correct course after taking Paradigm's shot. You brandish your machete and leap down off the balcony towards you know it. No, I want this to happen. Yep. 
I want this to happen. <laughs> I'm going to glitch you again. Glitch again? All right. I won't and get worse. Never mind. Get it doesn't worse. happen. You raise the machete above your head as you fly through the air and the sensor on the back of the drone registers your motion and it swerves out of the way and your machete comes down, cleaves through the air and strikes the concrete ground below. I'll roll and come up. All right, Jonathan, you're up. Um, from his vantage point, uh, down on the ground behind the dumpster, he feels uh, pretty comfortable uh, firing firing at the one that Kitty dismissed with the assault rifle. Yeah, go ahead. DR 14 to hit it. Presence right, plus guns. Uh, that is a 17. 17, nice. As it swerves out of the way to dodge Kitty leaping down on it, it happens to fly directly into your crosshairs and using that well-honed trigger finger of yours, you take the shot. Roll the damage for me. Uh, that is a five. That is a five. The bullet slams into it. Five plus two is seven. Bang! One of the machine guns drops off and your bullet clears the plating off the side, revealing the wiring underneath. Sparks fly off the drone, but it's still in the air. And Ghost... Paradigm, wherever you are, we need to have a talk about this after we're done. <laughs> yeah. Ghost, you're up. Uh, how's my worm doing? Yeah, your worm's ready to unleash. Go ahead and make me a knowledge technology check. And do. Oh, uh, rock. Um, that's a six. A six. You smile as you smash the enter button, uploading the virus into both drones. The AI cluster that Paradigm owes a debt to is more than prepared for such feeble attempts to breach the security of its agents and as soon as the worm is uploaded the countermeasures activate and you swear as the words connection lost blink on the screen of your cyber deck all right every time shit gets serious uh fuck keep him distracted guys so one of the drones, the one that's sparking wires flying out of it, turns towards Kitty and unloads its barrel. Kitty, go roll me a DR12 agility uh, acrobatics to dodge. Well, fortunately she's small. Yes, you get a bonus on this. Still, this uh, she's bouncing off the walls trying to parkour scrambling over dumpsters and a 13 means that she'll clear it yep she clears it as the bullets slam into the brick wall behind her and then the second drone takes fire at jonathan behind the dumpster go ahead jonathan roll me an agility acrobatics dr12 to dodge Agility acrobatics can do. Yep. All right. DR10 because oh. your bodyguard yeah, is also. Yeah. Yeah. Behind the dumpster and your bodyguard. So DR10. Works on him too. Wow. Cool. Yes. Yeah, so you and people next to you. Nice. Ah, uh, that's a two. I'm gonna glitch and reroll and that. Go ahead and glitch. Oh. Machine guns do hurt. Uh, that's not a whole lot better. Um, but yeah. with agility, uh, with agility, that brings it up to ten. So that's enough. Enough. Just enough. Just. Shunk, 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 shunk. One of the bullets grazes you, however, as you did glitch, and you, and even with the glitch, you only just got it. So I'm going to apply some DM fiat. I'm going to roll, <laughs> and you take half the damage. The name of the shard. You take two points of damage as one of the bullets grazes your shoulder. Roll your arm. Uh, 
Jonathan swears yeah. and like curls up in a ball, like in the most little nooky cro- corner of the dumpster possible. You do have armor though, don't you, Jonathan? Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna yeah. roll Go ahead, roll your armor, see if you soak that damage. Uh, that's a two. That's a two, yeah, all right. So you soak the damage, no damage at all. Oh, fantastic. It probably hurts like a mofo, yeah. but yeah. It hurts, it does hurt like a mofo, but you quickly check under the hem of your coat and see that it didn't pierce the skin. There's a little bit of redness there, but no permanent damage. All right, Paradigm, you're up. Uh, did you say one of the guns got shot off one of them? Yep. Does it look like it's still functional in any way? It looks like it's still functional, but barely. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run over to it and try and fire back at it with a tongue gun. Yep. Ah, I read my mind. Go for yeah. it. You rush forwards, <laughs> grab the machine gun off the ground, flick it into your fingers, and open fire. <laughs> Go ahead and roll. Still, I'm guessing still just present guns, yeah? Yep, still present. Unless you're gonna go for auto fire, because these do have auto fire. Yeah. That's nah, real. Uh, well, thankfully I'm invisible because that's an 8. 8, nice. Go ahead and roll d4 for the damage, please. They're SMGs only deal d4. Uh, uh, three. As you unload, all the bullets slam into the drone's wiring and then <laughs> it explodes. It is close enough to you, however, I will ask you to go ahead and make a dexterity acrobatics check for me to see if you can clear the explosion. Uh, okay. Agility acrobatics, yeah. 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 What are no, I'm not really, because I don't know. Do I think that's enough? <laughs> it'll just be, it'll be DR12. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to glitch that. Oh. Well, I glitched that and rolled a one. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, is that a fumble then? Mm. That is indeed yeah, a, fumble. Yeah, a fumble. I'm going to apply double damage. I rolled, a directly on me. <laughs> I rolled a three. You take six points of damage as, in its Ooh. last moments, the drone turns, swivels uh. in your direction and makes a beeline towards you. And when it explodes, it singes the front of your face and hair. Your skin calls out in pain as the nanos rush to flood the wound and repair the skin. So I bought some style guard armor, so do I still roll minus D2 for that or Yeah, go ahead. That not fine. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I was just reduced it by one, so I take one. five damage then. Five so, points of damage, yeah. Alright. Um, Kitty, what would you like to do? You don't see Ghost, you don't see Paradigm, but you hear him suddenly shriek in pain as the drone explodes in his face. Well, the one, on, the one on me is still active and still firing at me, so Kitty's thinking the best thing she can do is draw fire so her friends can yep. handle it. Uh, hate to waste shots. She'll whip out the shotgun, take a blast, then, you know, keep on bouncing back and forth. I'm bouncing back and forth. Go ahead. Roll me a presence guns. All right. 14. 14, Sorry, nice. 15. 15. 15, yeah, My enough bet. to hit it. Go ahead, roll the damage. Right. Well, when you're slinging buckshot, it doesn't matter how much you dodge. Seven points. Seven points. Ooh, very yeah. nice. The flyer swerves, attempts to dodge out of the way, but it doesn't matter. It's buckshot. You blast <laughs> it with your shotgun, and a plate drops off the bottom, revealing the wiring within. The gears. It blows her off her feet, she bounces off a wall. Bounces off a wall, yep. 
the, the drone's engines whir as it attempts to course correct, clearly having trouble doing so. And Jonathan, you're up. Um, at this point, Jonathan's kind of regained some composure. He's coming out of his little huddle in the corner and uh, pokes his head out um, from behind the dumpster to see if any of the civilians have possibly been hurt in any of this. You don't think any of them have been. The, the street beyond the alleyway appears to be completely empty now. People have got out of their cars, left them in the street, and ran into the nearby buildings, taking shelter in the shop fronts. And it thinks to himself, fuck, is there, is there a single mission we're going to go on while we don't end up on the nighttime news? <laughs> and uh, uh, Radius is a soul rifle and fires it at the nearest, um, yeah, uh, the, the, the remaining player. Go ahead. DR14 on a presence guns check to hit it. Uh, that is a 19. 19, you hit it. It only has one HP left, so no need to roll. Take aim at the wiring on its underside and fire. Your bullet slams directly into its CPU, shattering it. And as it explodes, I would like Kitty to make an agility acrobatics test. DR12 mm. for me. I don't think being small would help me here. No. Okay. DR14, you said? 12. Oh, 12. Okay. Just normal. So with a 19, Kitty doesn't even bother to look. Yeah. She just turns her back and walks away. Turn your back, walk away. as <laughs> It explodes and rains sprigs and pieces of silicon down into the alleyway. There you go. Combat is over. Anyone who was hurt may roll a d4 to recover. And anyone who fired their gun, please go ahead and roll a d8 to see if you run out of ammo. I, I do have to load today. a mag. Oh, four. four, you're fine. Kitty takes one of the oversized uh, shells off your bandolier, slides it in. Yep. Um, I got a six. Is that a reload that's, or no reload? That's fine. It's only one D one to three is a reload. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Meanwhile, Paradigm, the, mis the SMG that you took off the drone and fired doesn't appear to be reloadable. Uh, you exhausted the ammo it had in it firing at the drone. It's not likely you could use yeah. this again, but you could probably sell it for parts. And yeah, I'll use... Yeah, I guess my remaining, like, what, 20 seconds of invisibility, I'm just gonna yeah, rummage through and see what I can pull out of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> you just start rummaging through what's left of the drones and you see a couple of intact circuit boards and gears you don't know what they do but you know that they should fetch a decent price on the market and you quickly shovel them into your bags just as the nanobots surge back into your body ending the cloaking effect and you phase in probably to Jonathan's quite angry look. Yeah, I was going to say, um, Jonathan was watching this uh, SMG kind of floating around in midair, bits falling <laughs> off it, and um, as Paradigm uh, fizzled back into existence, he walks over and um, leans over him, towering. Alright, so when the fuck are you going to tell us that you are going to get us all killed? When was Why don't we have this here appointment somewhere not here? Because surely the cops be on the way. Let's move and talk. As as I Kitty didn't, says I didn't know this, AI can get impatient. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as Kitty says this, in the distance you hear the telltale sirens of a sec corp transport making its way to your location. And so, Kitty, you grab Paradigm by the hand, pull him away, and start running directly down the alleyway, emerging into the bustling street of the next city block. She's and then, actually got some yep. strength on her, some momentum that seems out of proportion yeah, to her mass. Well, she is a robot, so, <laughs> you know, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're small. When you're made out of metal and silicon, you know, you're a bit stronger than yeah. flesh and blood people. Yeah. 
So you step out onto the bustling street, the cars whoosh past and you slide your weapons into your coats as you begin to walk casually down the street, blending into the crowds of people, making your way to the coordinates. And as you walk, you may talk. All right, since this does seem to be the right avenue and uh, location for this discussion, what gives? <laughs> well, like I said, I didn't know an AI could eat impatient. Impatient with what? What did you do? Uh, I died. And apparently it saved me when I was infected with this. And I didn't just like gestures to the like corruption of his arms and stuff. What, so it wants its charity back? It wants, yes. It wants what it believes I owe it back for saving my life. Does anybody else have any AI coming after them anytime soon? Ah, <laughs> uh, I hope not. Err, uh, not exactly. Though I no, do be keep be getting emails telling me I need to come in for a repossession as a corporate asset. I'm not sure what that's all about. Right, okay. So uh, at least two of us, at least two of us have something after us. Fantastic. At this but point, I, well, I, hey. I'd be hearing Ivan talking about debt, so what? Who do ye owe money to? Yeah, who do ye owe else money would, to? Why else would you be doing this if you don't owe someone something? Well, uh, nobody wants me dead. That's. that's. Yeah, yeah. Nobody, nobody wants me dead. That, uh, uh, yeah. I'm going to leave it at that for now. You sure about I'm that? that? I'm pretty sure. Come on. It's cute. I'm sure someone in the city wants you dead. Oh, who doesn't? I mean, we've already made such a name for us. Oh, fine, whatever. Um, well, I also, used to work Also, would you call for... this... T- Sorry, but would you call this taking a breather? In which case, uh, Paradox can regain D4. Yeah. Well, Who did he used to work for? <sighs> used to work for TG Labs. I was on their specialty medical team. Suffice to say, I'm not anymore, and I owe them some money. But they're not trying to kill me. Okay. And then Kitty looks at Ghost. What? Yeah, why are you with us? You're like, what, Uh, 14? uh, uh, Excuse me! I I am not... What a fucking whatever. Uh, I... Look, I I just need... I need cash for a project, alright? And this project won't come after us, will it? Uh, I hope not. Don't know how it would, but, uh, you know, I, I've borrowed money from people. I've I've gotten parts from people. It's possible something will come after me. And we're, dude, I, is this new to you? Like... So I knew we were all up shit creek, but this is, um... <laughs> right, as long as no more drones come after us anytime soon, I'm going to be happy. And if they do come after us, well... I truly hope it's on her own time. I don't want to yeah. have to deal with this again. I do just don't worry, to, Jonathan. I do just want to point out that um, if Paradigm wasn't invisible, those SMGs are D4 damage auto fire. So mm-hmm. yeah, could have gone yeah. potentially pretty bad. But <laughs> thank well, God I ate that bat. <laughs> the message rang through loud and clear. The AI cluster that revived you after your ill-fated expedition into Ground Zero wants its creds back. You failed to mention to the group that it revived you for the explicit purpose of serving as its agent in meat space. Something that you immediately decided not to do. Prompting the AI's wrath. You're already in service to alien bugs in your body. You didn't want to be in the pocket of a computer as well. So, after about 20 minutes, you reach the location designated by the coordinates. A doctor's clinic. Or it was a doctor's clinic. The windows are shuttered. 
iron roller shutters pulled down over them, covered in graffiti tags, and a thick iron chain is wrapped around the door handle. A faded sign above the door reads Public Clinic Number 17 Please have your insurance chips at the ready and there's an Alliance and Incorporated logo next to it. Is it clear from the outside if anybody's inside? Doesn't look like it. Although you wouldn't really have any way to tell. The windows are shuttered up, the door is chained shut. You have no means of looking inside, but you can't... You, you don't know how someone could possibly be in there. Um, as a precaution, Jonathan's going to grab the um, vision visor that he keeps around his neck and pull it up to his eyes and switch it over to ultrasound mode. Just See if there's anything case. kind of obvious that pops up. Yep. So yeah. <laughs> Kind of going to put on yeah, the new visor he has because I yeah. bought the same, bought the same bought thing. The same thing. Switch it, let's switch it to heat vision. Yep, switch it to heat vision. <laughs> I'd like both of you to make presence investigate checks for me. Um, that is a 17. 17. And uh, Paradigm? Oh, that is a five. It's a five. Paradigm, you're clearly not used to using this new equipment. Not yet. That's okay, because... Jonathan is. He's more than used to it. So... He flicks the button on the side of his visor, turns it on to heat vision, and steps towards the shuttered clinic. Meanwhile, cars buzz by in the street behind you, splashing water that soaks into the back of your it soaks into the backs of your clothing. As Crowd a bit of flavor, yep. Um, uh, while during this, uh, Jonathan keeps suspiciously like looking around behind him to make sure no cars are coming. For he like tries to peer through windows yep. and things like that. Waits. He's clearly not a very sneaky person. Waits for a hover car <laughs> to go past, then waits for a group of grey suit wearing businessmen to make their way past before he flicks the heat vision back on and presses his face. Up, at the, up into the crack, the tiny hairline crack between the side of the shutter and the wall of the building. And indeed, someone is inside, or something, something alive is inside. Something lights up on your display, emanating body heat. Through this tiny crack, you can't get a very good look at them, but you can determine that they're probably human, and by the looks of it, they're kneeled over, rifling through something. Most likely a filing cabinet or a desk. Yeah, turning back to the others, um, he slips it back around his neck like a scarf. Well, it looks like somebody might have beat us to the punch. There's somebody in there. I don't know what they're doing. We could be doing what we're doing. Just looking to steal something, but can't tell you any more than that. Kitty so vocalizes. Just one room. Seems to be. And the door is chained shut from the outside. So you wonder how, if someone's in there, how they could have got in and been able to chain the door shut. It's likely there's another way. This be a drop-off point. This is supposed to be where we go to pick up the drug. I don't do drugs, kids. But this is supposed to be where, where we pick it up. So he might be putting it there for us to find, hey? What, what do you like think Tate do? had an inside man? Or the drug, well, the... We, the drugs that 
ghost bought from the vendor, perhaps. Yeah. That's what I'd be thinking. I mean, you'd be buying it, so you could just go ahead and walk in. You're supposed to be here. What if this was the person who bought, who bought the information before us? Then we can sort it out with him, and we'll know more before we, but then yeah. we did it for. So how would you like to do this? Unchain the door and burst on in, or sneak around, see if you can find a nearby alleyway, check if there's a back door some other way, perhaps the way this person got in. Let's peep around. If we're Look, a little if, leery. Even if we weren't worried about him finding us, um, and he looks suspiciously once again over his shoulder at a car going past, making it look so much worse, uh, people will stop and stare. Yeah, they will. <laughs> Alright. Don't do this very often, do you? What, break into people's houses? Heavens, no. <laughs> and their places of business. Go ahead. What do you? Is this yeah. normal for you? I wouldn't say normal, but you do what you have to. Well, people lived in those houses in Ground Zero a long time ago. Sure, there was no one living in them when you went there, but they were houses, and someone lived there at one point. <laughs> Might have been mutants there, but you yeah. don't really count those. So, Kitty, I'd like you to make me a presence investigate test. All right, I will give that a shot. Not really her scene, but You're, you six. Yeah. Well, you said you wanted to scout around, so I. Right. You break off from the others as Jonathan and. Paradigm talk about breaking into houses and places of business. Make your way a bit further down the street and you notice a narrow side street between the laundromat that's attached to the clinic and a high street chrome retailer. The street the, the, the side street seems to wind into this cluster of buildings and you can't be certain, but based on how at the very end of the side street, there's a turn off leading to the left. It's possible that it might run alongside the back of the clinic. I'll relay that to the others. And then I will start climbing. Yep. How, how many stories is the clinic? So the clinic itself is only one story, but the buildings on either side of it are much higher. At least two, three stories. All right. I'll get a higher vantage point. Yep. To look down from above. Go ahead and make an agility acrobatics test for me, please. That I can do. Eleven. Eleven. You can glitch or I'll allow you to fail to pass with a cost. <sighs> I'll glitch. I'm playing a class that has a bunch of those, so... Worse. God bless it. Fail with a cost, then. Ooh. Yep, fail with a cost. As you did during the fight before you clamber onto a dumpster, grab hold of a rusted drainage pipe and begin to climb up it. And when you reach the top, you look behind you and see a balcony sticking out of the second story of the chrome retailer. You leap through the air, pirouetting on to the balcony, but mistiming your jump coming just too short. You reach out a hand, grab the edge of the alleyway, and as you clasp down on it, snap! A rat trap that was left out for the local rodents clasps over your fingers, and you take a, you take a point of damage as you hoist yourself over the waist-high wall onto the balcony. You rip the rat trap off your fingers and drop it down into the alleyway below. 
And as it clatters down onto the cobblestone, you see something that you didn't notice when you were scouting around before. Spots of wet blood on the cobblestone. A trail leading down the alleyway. Looks fresh. At least, you can see the neon light reflected in it. It glimmers as the headlights of cars scream by in the street. Well now. Kitty will go and get vantage to see where that trail goes. Yeah. So it's now but like... this took a while, yep, so... It would take a while, and... It's okay, I'm sure you're keeping the others up to date on what you've found. Okay. I am. So, the rest of you standing in front of the clinic, waiting to see what Kitty finds. What do you do when Kitty finally chimes in and says, Yeah, I be in the crow's nest, and it looks like someone's taken a tumble in the alleyway, there be a trail of blood. Uh, the gears in um, Jonathan's head turn. If somebody's injured, they would never be able to go to a clinic and never have access to the medication they need. They're here and they're stealing something for themselves. Yeah, would be. They quickly relate onto them uh, that that's his, that's, his, that's his suspicion. Seems a reasonable assumption to me. Hey. So then we should follow the blood and see how they got it. I don't know if there's anything left of them either. Yeah, up to you. So, Jonathan, would you like to lead the others down the alleyway? Absolutely. With yeah. uh, with with uh, Gusto. With Gusto. Yeah, if someone's hurt, they need help. That would be your job, but also finding them, figuring out what they're trying to take is part of this job. So you immediately make your way down the block Stepping into the alleyway beside the chrome retailer, you look up and see Kitty on the balcony above. She looks down at you and waves, and then you lead Ghost and Paradigm into the alleyway, following the trail of blood around the corner. The body is slumped behind a large, rusty dumpster in a dark alleyway. The air is thick with the smell of garbage and pollutants. The victim has multiple gaping wounds visible on their torso and their clothes are torn and bloodstained. Their cybernetic enhancements now lifeless are partially visible through the gashes in their clothes. A discarded weapon, a pistol, lies a few feet away, glitter, glinting in the flickering neon lights of the city. A pool of blood has formed under the body, reflecting the grim scene. And just beyond them, the back door of the clinic, a rusted metal slab, lies ajar. From inside, you can hear the sounds of someone wrenching open metal drawers and cabinets, rifling through them, slamming them shut as they move on to the next one. Uh, Jonathan's going to grab the pistol and tuck it into his belt while quickly once overing um, the hunched over figure, seeing what his wounds are like, uh, if he has anything on him or anything identifiable. Yep. He has a do they happen suspicion. To be wear- do they happen to be wearing gang colors? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. He has a suspicion that this might be um, some of the protection for the clinic. Well, this person in particular doesn't seem to be wearing gang clothing. They're dressed up much how you'd expect a doctor to be. Tattered white coat, black slacks, a bloodstained tie dangling lopsided off their shirt. But I will allow you to make a knowledge medicine test for me, please, Jonathan. Um, a knowledge medicine brings me to 13. 13. You kneel down over the body as the others gather behind you, and 
you see that these are quite clearly stab wounds based on the size and depth of them. Probably from a long bladed weapon like a machete. There's quite a lot of them indicating that the attacker was very vicious, that they weren't trying to maim this person or bestow a message. They wanted this guy dead and didn't care how they did it. Uh, Jonathan's eyes go wide a little bit and he relays this on to everybody on the subvocal channel. We should probably go in and confront the feller who's looting the place. Yes, let's uh, not get too close, shall we? I don't want to end up like him. Yep. So I suppose you want to do this as quietly as possible? Yeah, and since I'm up here, I'll be approaching from the roof. Yeah. See if I can get in through the vents. Or so something like you, that. Kitty, won't need to make a stealth check, but I will ask you to make a presence investigate check while I ask Ghost, Paradigm, and Jonathan to make agility stealth checks for me. Uh, I don't suppose I can throw acrobatics in. Uh. Oh yeah, you can throw acrobatics in if you'd like to do what Kitty's doing, get up onto one of the balconies and... Yeah, I reckon Ghost would be doing that, so let's say um, a 16. Please do. Yeah. Best I got a 3, so... Yeah, that's another 13 for me. My dice suddenly gave me. 13. And how'd you go, Paradigm? What are we? Agility, is it? Agility, stealth, yep. Yep, so it's 12. 12, lovely. Successes all around, except for Kitty. Yeah. So, Kitty, you scramble up onto the roof of the chrome dealership and then balancing on a beam of wood that hangs off the side, you definitely drop down onto the clinic. You start looking around for a vent or some other access point, but you're buffeted by a gust of hot air from the AC unit that obscures your vision. <laughs> Ah, we be sailing in the fog. Meanwhile, Ghost smiles at Jonathan and Paradigm, and then she whirls around, climbs up onto the dumpster that the un- the body of this unfortunate man is slumped against, and seems to run up the wall running about halfway up before kicking off the wall grabbing on to a drainage pipe on the building opposite pulling herself up and then kicking off that wall back flipping onto the roof of the clinic she walks past kitty who's coughing brushing the gust of hot air out of her face and points out a small metal grate on the roof, which she then carefully lifts, sliding it away, granting Kitty and Ghost a clear view into the clinic below. Tiny cats are booking over. Jonathan and Paradigm unsling their weapons and creep down the cobblestone alleyway towards the open door, pressing up against the wall when they reach it, and then summoning all their courage, leaning out of cover and peeking through the gap in the door into the clinic. The inside of the clinic is unlit, dusty, the furniture within, what remains of it, unused. There's a desk that's piled high with cardboard boxes and piles of papers and folders and the wall beside it is lined with metal filing cabinets. A man wearing a leather jacket with pale green snakes embroidered onto the sleeves is rifling through the filing cabinets while 
his compatriot, a second Virid Viper, stands guard, occasionally peering between the back door and the shuttered window, both of them brandishing bloodstained machetes. But you also see guns wedged into their belts. Hurry up, hurry up, says the man standing guard. Come on, we know this guy was selling drugs on the street. Our drugs, we need to know who he was selling them to. Yeah, 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 keep your, keep your hair on. I'm finding it, I'm finding it. There's a whole, whole lot of shit in here. Kitty pulls out a flashbang and puts the video image to the other saying, you up? Go ahead. Uh, Jonathan um, signals with his um, hands up towards the vent, like the hole in the roof, and gives a little like thumbs up, and um, shuts his eyes and uh, puts puts like his elbow across his face. Yep. Paradigm, you're fine with that plan. Yeah, I guess this is just like what and tries to cover his eyes. <laughs> yep. All right. We probably want to take, take one best prisoner. Take one prisoner. Good idea. All right. Kitty reaches into her bag, pulls out a flashbang grenade, and drops it down the hole. The viper who's standing guard hears it clatter onto the floor. He has just enough time to look at it, register what it is, and open his mouth to shout when BANG! The flash flashbang goes off, filling the tiny clinic with bright light. All right. Kitty, you're the one who dropped the flashbang. Go ahead, roll a d6 for me. All right. One. One. Enemies go first. Good thing you got the flashbang set up. <laughs> yeah. The ringing in your ears subsides. And you hear the tail end of the Viper's warning. The roof! And the Viper, who's rifling through the cabinets, whirls around, draws his weapon, and unable to see Kitty or Ghost clearly, just starts firing his submachine gun up towards the roof. Kitty, go ahead and make for me a agility acrobatics test to dodge. Minus four DR, so you've only got to get eight. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking a round. It is not her day. All right. So he fires the submachine gun and uh, let me just flip to the right part of the book. Yeah. Fires his machine pistol. Bang, 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 blindly above him. He can't see you and yet somehow he manages to riddle your torso with bullets just before you duck out of the way and you take Oof. six points of damage roll your armor, armor knocks that four four I upgraded to the heavy coat so i take two and he is auto firing so yep. i'm so now I get to roll again yeah well you've ducked out of cover so i will now get ghost to uh roll an agility acrobatics check you got it. They are eight. Do you eight? Oh, thank God. Okay, I got nine. Yeah, nine. Seeing the bullets tear through Kitty's pirate uniform, you just duck under the rim of the access vent and hear the bullets slam into the concrete next to you, your ears vibrating with each bullet. The other goon whirls around and points his... He just unslings his machete and charges towards the open back door. And it's going. he's going to spend all his rounds moving towards Jonathan and Paradigm. Okay. So, Ghost, you're up first. Going Is there anything around that might make... Are they still, like... Suffering from the flashbang a bit. They sure are. Oh, yep. Yeah. So they're going to be, they're going to be easier to hit as well if you try to fire at them. 
and easy to confuse. Is there anything around that would play audio? Um, roll me a d20. If it's 11 or above, then yes. 13. Oh, okay. no, it rolled to one. Rolled <laughs> okay. To one. Oh. Yeah, sure. the, you peer down into the clinic, risking your life to take a quick look and see that the clinic's obviously been decommissioned for a long time. Everything of value has been removed. It's literally just the desk and the filing cabinets. There are okay. neon lights and billboards on the street outside, of course, but with the flashbang having gone off currently, sending a loud, trill ringing through their ears, it's very unlikely they'd hear any sound you were to make out on the street. Yeah, okay. It's not a whole lot here that I can do except for, yeah, I'm just going to... Take a uh, shot. The guy who's running at Paradigm in Justin. Yep. So uh, aiming for back. aiming for either his back or yeah, like anything to immobilize. Yeah, mobilize rather than kill. Go ahead, roll me a presence guns check. Um Oh, that's an eight. That's an eight? Well, that's enough to hit him because flashbang grenade awesome. means minus four DR, so go ahead, roll Roughly. your damage. Which is uh a D eight. And that comes to... Oh, one. <laughs> one point of damage. You lean over, raise your ancient revolver, and fire a barrage of bullets down at the man. Most of them slam into the cracked tiles. But one bullet gets him right in the small of his back, and he shouts as he tumbles forwards, face first, onto the dusty floor. All right. Jonathan, you're up. Um, so which was the um the goon who is uh giving orders? Was that the uh, one with the machete coming towards us or the one who Yeah, fired one, at the one who's coming towards you was the what seem was the one giving orders that you could tell. But they're both wearing the same insignia, so if there's a way to tell if one's ranked higher, you don't know. Uh, in that case, uh, Jonathan is going to, um, grab Paradigm by the shoulder and kind of switch through places so he's in front. Yep. And take shots at the guy who, um, is just shooting away at the ceiling. Yep. Trade places, you shout. As you stand in the doorway, raise your assault rifle and fire at the guy next to the filing cabinets. Go ahead. Make me a presence guns check. DR8 to hit him. Uh, that is, uh, an 11. An 11. Ooh, your aim is true and his head explodes like a watermelon. He doesn't even have a chance to scream. Blood gushes from what's left of his skull as his headless corpse slumps against the filing cabinet and slides to the floor. Oh, Jesus, he didn't have much health. Yeah. All right, yeah. Kitty, you're up. Ah, we got Machete Guy, who's a lone survivor. She's gonna run across the roof and try to tack home to the ground. If he loses a few teeth on process, that's fine. Like, half, the, so the cloth over half her face has been sheared away, so she's got a little Terminator face going on as yeah. she takes <laughs> blindly. <laughs> All right, go ahead. You're gonna tackle him. That will be a strength, strength melee. Possible. So that's uh, not a natural 20. A strength athletics, 20 actually. Yeah. Oh, in that case, only an 18. Only an 18. It's more than enough. He cli He's about to climb up from the floor where he was lying from Ghost's shot. And just as he climbs to his feet, you're on him. You leap down through the hole, charge across the floor, and yeah, wrap your arm around his neck, grappling him. He screams Arms. and yep. shouts, ah, ah, Get off me! Get off me! Give up or you're a dead scallywag. We go to Paradigm. Uh, okay. If you want to play boot to face till he's unconscious, now might be the time. Yeah, because I'll yeah, head over and just try and... 
See if I can knock the guy out the more kitties on held. Yep. Reach for your machete, flip it over so that you're gripping the blade, and you start to pummel him with the hilt. Uh, go ahead and yeah, make yeah, a... Yeah, you know, you know. Go ahead and make a strength plus melee check. Oh, you need, so. There you go. Strength melee, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, strength melee. Uh-huh. But, uh... Oh, it's only 13. 13's more than enough because he's at minus 4 DR from the flashbang and another 2 from being grappled by Kitty, so you only needed to roll 6. Go ahead, roll damage. Yeah. D2, oh no, D6, blunt, yeah, yeah. alright. Yeah, D6, blunt. Machete. Just don't split him like a watermelon, we need him. It's five. Five, yeah. He grunts, <laughs> oh, yeah! trying to pull away from Kitty as you step forwards and slam the hilt of your blade into his head, knocking him out cold. Well done. Combat is over. Anyone who was hurt may roll a d4. Anyone who fired their gun may roll d8s. One to three means you need to reload. Kitty casually pulls out a stapler and starts putting your face back together. (laughs) (laughs) I rolled a one again. One. Oh, man, that revolver goes through ammo really quickly. (laughs) But I suppose it is only a revolver, so... I I gotta get this thing locked at. Yeah. Is the, is the D4 for healing, is that only if you actually got hurt in this combat, or oh, is no, just... well, Yeah, no, anyone can go ahead and roll. You always take a breather at the end of combat. I just say, anyone who got hurt. I forgot that some people are already hurt. Yeah. I just wanted to make, I just wanted to make sure before I rolled, that's all. I like to think that Ghost is really yeah. bad with all the yeah, analog but... tech. Yeah. Yeah. But... Yeah. As... So who who else yeah. needed to Sorry. reload aside from Ghost? Uh, Jonathan, but he rolled an eight, so he's yeah. uh, clipped his bottom yeah. list today. So that's okay. <laughs> as Ghost slides an auto loader into the revolver and pulls back the catch, she that's smiles, so knowing that at least she's not having to subscribe to some sort of fast reload service that would no doubt plague everyone else who's using smart weapons at some point. Alright. Well, still, I Shots. think she's gonna get her gear uh, improved at some point. Shots fired, but this was a bit out of the way. Mm. Yeah. It's unlikely that any... It, it seems unlikely that people would have heard the scuffle. So we are pretty far back. Alright, here be the plan. One of we need to blindfold him. One of you who looks scary and the doctor should revive him and bind him, revive him and question him while the other two toss the clinic. Sound about right? Yeah, sounds like a good deal to me. Um, yeah, All I'll, right, I'm searching uh, with me. Well, I'll bring him round and I think um, Mr. Mouthbelly here should um, be the scary one. The interrogator. <laughs> Just keep him blindfolded so we don't see our faces is my advice. So using... Uh, uh, Ghost lowers herself down the hole, dropping next to Kitty as... Jonathan leans over the unconscious Viper, drags him towards one of the walls, props him up, and starts bringing him around, slapping his cheeks. Hey, come on. Come on. You're okay. You're okay. Wake up. Wake up. The man groans. Ugh. Ugh. As he opens his eyes, he looks groggily up at you. Ugh. The fuck you want? You know who you're fucking dealing with? Ah, uh, you didn't blindfold him. Ah, uh, well. No, no, well, you slipped on a... I'll say you slipped on a yeah. blindfold, and under the blindfold, he's just looking up groggily into the blackness. He says, Ugh. You know who the fuck, fuck you're dealing with? You just... You just knocked off a virid viper, man. Yeah, we've been dealing with you silly serpents for days now. Silly serpents. <laughs> silly serpents. I love that. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> it's a good one, mate. It's a good one. 
Actually, I think it's, it gets a like over our ch our comm channel. Beep. <laughs> yeah, little thumbs up appears, blinking in the retinal feed, and a smiley, Sorry. winky face. Go ahead. Pops a Virid anyway. I got a deal for you, Virid. Um, Virid Vipers. Virid is. Ah, uh, I don't know what Virid is, but you be, be short for with... Viridian. Means green. Does it? Why don't you just fucking say green then? Green Vipers. Don't have the same ring. Anyway, you can do what you want with me. If the Vipers know who you are, then it's only a matter of time before they find you and fuck you up, man. They're gonna fuck us up, man. We better watch out, man. <laughs> Look, I've got a deal for you, buddy. Yeah. Um. We're playing a bit of good cop, bad cop here, just uh, heads up, and I'm the good cop. Now, you He's can either... Cop. Yeah, I, I am actually quite a good cop. He's the good cop. So, you've got some oh, options. Good cop. We can either no, break so more of your cop. fingers and other things as well, uh, or you can tell us exactly what she's looking for here. <laughs> Jonathan, go ahead and make for me a Presence Intimidate check. Intimidated by that voice, come on. Okay. <laughs> presence Persuade, then. And meanwhile, Kitty and Ghost, go ahead and make uh, Presence Investigate checks for me. <laughs> That's a five. That five. sounds about right. Bad cop might want to take a turn. Uh, man! <laughs> yeah, I think this is more thematic. <laughs> Get fucked, man. You sound like you're one of them latte sippers from the hills. Ain't you got yoga to get to? Yeah, I'm actually just stepping out now. Um, I paradigm. And he uh, walks off and leans up against a cabinet, checking his gun. <laughs> He's the bad cop. As Ghost and Kitty start searching through the filing cabinets, go ahead, Paradigm, what would you like to do? Uh, he's just going to walk up and just... First off, he just grabs the guy's, grabs the guy's hair and just smacks his head into the wall once. Ah! Oh, the fuck, man? Uh, You're going to pay for that? Yeah, we had the chance to talk and say... Okay, so we tried very nice. You can either tell us what we tell us what you want to know, and maybe get out of this alive, or I can cut your, cut the top of your scalp off and eat your brain and find the information out that way. As you say this, oh, you dude, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, Jonathan <laughs> leans across. Yeah, you can actually do that. As you dude, say so this, you feel metal. you feel <laughs> your navel mouth smile, relishing relishing the possible possible bloodshed. That could result from this. Go ahead, make me a presence intimidate check, please, Paradigm. We're probably getting some bonuses. He's boned and he knows it. Yeah. <laughs> you only need a 10. Uh, well, it's a good thing my presence went up because it's a total 10. <laughs> 10. So as you say this, you feel the lips of your navel mouth mimicking the same movements. And it's almost as if there's two of you saying the same thing at the same time. Your normal voice and something else, something softer, lower, growling, bestial. Oh, what the fuck? What the fuck? You're some kind of nano freak, aren't you? Okay, all right. Shit. Don't fucking eat me, man. Don't don't eat me, man. I'll tell you what you need to know. Let this be a lesson uh, of the future. If the good cop says he wants something, listen to the good cop. Chris just chimes in. Look, man, I know this guy, and I didn't even know he could do the eating information thing. So, like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie to him. I don't know what he can do. Okay, uh, look, uh, uh, are you friends with the Doc? We, we, we've been supplying him with drugs, and he's been selling them, selling them on the street, secondary market. Evans found out. 
Evans found out and he sent us to deal with the guy and Now, which stuck with this baby? Guy who... Guy's been selling drugs. Used to work at this clinic before it closed down. Uh, goes by the name of Johnson's. Johnson. Yeah, G yeah, Johnson. Uh, that's him out in the alleyway. Uh, didn't put up much of a fight. We were just trying to find out who he's, who he's passing the drugs on to so we can hit them up next and... Damn! Really? Eat my brain for information? Oh my god! You freaks! Yeah, I got that one a lot. Anyway, this Evan fellow keeps getting mentioned. Who? Where? I suppose, where is he? Wait, 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 wait. You know Evans? Well, well word on the street is, um, he's got a bit of a reputation around here. How do you know that? E Evans is... Evans don't sell anything on the street. E e no one outside the Vipers knows Evans. Well, it seems that Evans might want to up his security a bit. I... I don't understand. Is... Wait, wait. You see the scowl on his face. Face deepen. Damn, we've been played, man. Meanwhile, Kitty, you're tossing the filing cabinets looking for anything of use and having about as much luck as the Vipers were. These are all old patient files, yeah. requisition orders for medications and chrome, several years out of date. Nothing. Ghost, do you be having any luck? I rolled a seven. Seven, yeah. It's all... Look, Ghost, it's analog records. It's all paper. Paper and folders, and that ain't your style. You know, says Kitty, turning around, if Eden Brains be on the table here, there will be a corpse, cooling corpse out there. Just yeah. saying. Very true, the doctor's corpse. He'd be having the idea. information. Look, I, I gotta figure out a way to make a search algorithm work on paper or something. This is fucking... This is beyond me. Kenny walks over simply and sit to the uh, fellow who's blindfolded and says, Where be Evans? Where do he be shipping the drugs from? Oh! I can't tell you that. If the Vipers found out, they... The Vipers ain't here right now, and the fellow who can eat your brain and find out any way is. So, really, you're telling it to us one way or t'other. The only question is whether your life be there by the time we be done. Make me a presence <laughs> intimidate check, please, just, Kitty. Yeah. I'm, I'm just in the background, just like rubbing my machete and something. It's just so you can either shink, yeah. shink, 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 clean. Like, 17. Sound like I'm sharpening it. 17. Look, mate, I really don't want to see it. Surely ain't uh, PG-13, but, you know, desperate times and all, and, well, you know, take uh, the worst thing he's done. Okay, okay, uh, block of flats down on Arcade Boulevard. Uh, Evans is there. He, he oversees the shipments, and we got... We got a bunch of set corpse guys paid Evans' pocket. They run security on the place. How many? Twelve of them. I. Oh. He groans in pain. Jesus, twelve of them. Twelve red cops. Mm. That's at least three each. All right. And he's said, Ghost, like, puts up a little hologram of a little calculator and punches that on. It's like, numbers check out. Yeah. <laughs> Three for each of us. Three. Mm. Twelve divided yeah. by four equals three. Blink, blink, blink. Is there anything else to worry about besides the cops 
And Evans. Uh, Tur turrets, traps, that kind of thing. Uh, could be. Look, it's above my pay grade. That's right. I just collect the shit and pass it how off, often, never being inside. How, how often are deliveries picked up, and uh, do they have any vehicles they show up with? Uh, twice a week, midnight. Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, green lowriders. You, you've probably seen them around. Uh, what day is it today, uh, GM? It is Tuesday today. So there is, according to this guy, a delivery due in just under an hour and a half. All right. Anyone else got any questions for the nice fella? I think I've had enough talking to him. All right. Kitty woos behind him, gives him a nice hug to the neck, and says, go to sleep. I... Gets off his window. You... <clears throat> he slumps forwards. And let him breathe once he's out. As you let him go, he hits the floor and he gasps. <gasps> but he won't be waking up anytime soon. Well, we know what we need to. It's up to you whether or not you want to eat the feller who's bleeding outside their uh, paradigm. It, it seems like a secondary way. Might be some bonus stuff we could get from this, but it ain't pertinent to the main mission. Yeah, also, I was, I was making that up. <laughs> well, not entirely, but that's a... Uh entirely true either <laughs> we might learn something but it has to be close to when he perished well, well, while Jonathan, you do that, uh, I'm going to stay inside if you don't mind yeah well, well Jonathan you would have been able to tell from the wounds that it's probably only been about 10-15 minutes since the guy was stabbed to death Well, if you want my advice, you better get to him quick. It was fairly recent, but, um... Oh, what am I saying? I don't want anything to do with this. And he, uh, busies himself with, um, scrounging the co- uh, the, um, corpse, uh, without a head. And, uh, yep. taking the machine pistol. Yep, taking the so machine Kitty pistol. Kitty will take the other machine pistol. Good idea. And... Any mags for them? Um... Yeah, they've each got a m spare mag. All right. So these are, uh, mechanically, these are, let me just look them up so you know what they are. So, Jonathan, you already have the pistol from outside from the dock. That's an ancient yeah. revolver. And these oh, machine really? pistols nice. are nine millimeter pistols that are capable of auto fire. Ooh. Guys, I, I could really use an upgrade. Define upgrade. I think I think this is something like yours, actually. This, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure what I've is from the fucking Civil War. So anything you'd be wanting help. a machine pistol is what you'd be saying. Would be nice. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan looks John at the revolver in his belt and um, looks at the machine pistol in his hand and looks back to the revolver in his belt and back to the machine pistol in his hand. You don't be having an assault rifle. Don't be greedy with the auto yeah. fire there. <laughs> you do be having an assault rifle. All right, and you do be having this machine pistol. There you go. And he uh, hands it over to you. Do you know how to use one of those? Uh, Point and click okay. interface. D one does ghost. Yeah, ghost knows. You point and you fire. And, and as you look at the machine pistol, you realize based on the fact the serial numbers are filed off and the little red tab that usually contains the ID chip has been pulled out, that this is jailbroken tech. That lovely. What's the, um, the roll on it? So it's a D6 Agility. damage capable- Yeah, same as, your no same as your current gun, but it's D6 damage capable of auto-fire, and to auto-fire, you do agility instead of presence, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, responding to Jonathan's question, uh, Ghost is going to try and draw 
a love hut with bullet holes in a nearby wall. Yeah, you raise the gun and... <laughs> it kind of looks like the letter B, but on its side. <laughs> oh, oh, you gave the wall an S. <laughs> I think it's nice. It's impressionist. Paradigm. Being a pirate. Mm-hmm. I know how hard it is to get your tongue around your R's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did I get any mags for that? Uh, yes, one mag. Just one spare mag. <laughs> Gotta oh. buy more, because, you know, these gang goons, they don't usually actually use their weapons. They're more just for appearance's sake, so they're not loaded to bear. But a paradigm, are you interested in using your dead cell spirits? Yeah, yeah. Given how quick, given how recently it was, yeah, I'll go over and try. All right, go ahead and make a present science check for me, please. And it's because I've already used the nano, which increases the pop yeah. one. So, so if, you that roll, just if you roll a, a two or a, or a one, it'll botch, and this will make it go up yeah. to three. Oh, cool. Yeah, that is a 14 total, so 14, success. 14, yes, yeah, success. Does anyone watch out of no. morbid curiosity? Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, I assume that Ghost is, like, hacked into Paradigm's retinas right now to, and yeah, is baby. filming They're all funny. of this as Best Paradigm steps out into the alleyway, grabs the Doctor's corpse and drags it drags it into the door frame and then he lifts up his shirt kneels down and with his machete (laughs) slices open the doctor's skull reaches his hand into the cavity and you all hear a sickening squelch (laughs) as he extracts a handful of brain matter and then his navel mouth smiling he feeds. <laughs> Paradigm, go ahead and test presence DR14 for me. Uh, no, I uh, Well, I rolled a 14, so... Yeah, lovely. You did not take the D6 damage from Ego Death. <laughs> Suddenly... Energy jolts through your brain as something hijacks your vision. You're seeing through the doctor's eyes his last moment seen through a hazy and distorted lens. He's kneeling in the alleyway. The woman with the piercings and the long red hair thanks him, giving him a thumbs up, turns and walks away. He raises a hand and says, oh, Remember, remember, don't take it all at once. One dose at a time. No ODs on this shit. Don't want Evans to hear about that. He turns around, finds himself face to face with the two Virid Vipers. I'm gonna need the... Oh, no, you guys didn't buy a can from the other guy, did you? Ah. What? Evan's got a problem? I thought he said the next shipment wasn't coming till tonight, and... One of the Virid Vipers rushes forward, slams the Doctor against the wall. Hey, 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 what gives? What gives? You're selling our shit on the street. Marking the price down and not kicking back up to us. That's what the problem is. Evan's found out about it, and Evan's is pissed. Evan sent you? But... But Evans is the one who's given me the drugs. Evans said he Evans said he wants me to sell them on the side. I, I be giving him half of everything I make and Bullshit, says one of the Vipers. Evans is meant to pass that shit on to Allianson. They got plans for that shit. And the other shipments as well. They go together. There's gotta be enough drugs for all the specimens in the other shipment. If they notice any mismatch between them, then... No, Evans wouldn't risk that. Uh, 
Say what you want, say what you want. I, I'm getting the shit from Evans, I swear. The two vipers look at each other. One of them shrugs. Ah, deal with them. We'll find what we need inside. The viper who's holding the doctor against the wall nods. He unslings his machete from his belt. No, wait, says the doctor. Wait, 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 wait. I can tell you, I, I got proof. Evans, Evans has given it to me. Ah! He screams as the viper runs him through with the machete. The vision ends and with a lurch, you're back in the real world paradigm. Yeah. Uh, okay, so according to him, what's he, happening? Yeah, Sorry, I can. That's right. Yeah, give a relay of it. Just this guy was apparently working with Evans. And Evans but, be running a game against Alliance, and and he said he had proof. Ghost. Odds are good this proof be a recording or some kind of data hidden. Do you think you could do a scan for hidden data? On it. Ghost, go ahead, make me a knowledge technology check. That's a 20. 20. You're already yeah. on it before Kitty's even, even raised the idea. You unsling your cyber deck, you've plugged it in, and when Kitty turns around to suggest it, you're already hunched in the corner. Oh, well, never mind it. Vacant look <laughs> on your face as you type commands fever feverishly into the keyboard. Ding, 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 ding. You detect the digital signature and you follow it with your vision across the clinic. There you see it. It's blinking under a loose tile in the floor. You crawl over, lift up the tile. And sure enough, there's a palm PDA wedged in the compartment underneath. You snatch it up and it's very easy to hack into it. It asks for a user ID and password, but you just bash the enter key on your keyboard a couple of times and you're in. The screen lights up and a holographic recording fills the small room so that all of you can watch. It's the doctor. Standing in front of him, just on the very edge of the camera, only his back and the huge coiled green viper emblem visible on his jacket. The doctor says, wait, wait, wait. You're going to give the drugs to me. I sell them and I give 50% back to you. But this is good quality shit. He looks at the vial in his hand. This is, this ain't stuff off the street. This is, this is corp stuff. Evans nods. Yeah. Allianson. And look, I've run the numbers myself. They're shipping about 20% more than they actually need. I'm giving it to you. Mark the price down by about 100, sell it for what it goes by on the street. We'll make a nice, tidy profit. 20%? More than they need? Well, wait, you're getting this shit from Allianson? They're using you guys? What, as drug runners? We get a shipment. We get a shipment from Allianson. Some of the goons underneath me come pick it up every Tuesday and Thursday. My job's to just sit on it until then. Shipments come in every Sunday. They sit in the warehouse until it's time. No one else sees them except me. No one has the chance to count them, and, well, there's plenty of places things could have fallen off the back of the truck before they get to me. Okay, right, right, right. But what if someone finds out? Well, what what if what if Allianson gets the drugs and... Hmm, well, look. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Well, what do they need it for? 
Well, uh, I can only assume they're doing some experiments or shit with it. See, the drugs come in one shipment, and then the other shipment is, well... Ah, trust me, Doc. You don't want to know. Why don't I want to know? What's in there? Nano freaks? Beasts? Shit from out of town? Yeah, uh... Something from out of town. Someone from out of town. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Then the recording ends. The hologram flickers and dies. I be having a wonderful and beautiful idea. Let me double check something to make sure I got it right, though. The sec ops in that, uh, their distribution center, did Alliance and hire him or did the Vipers? You don't actually know. The goon you asked said that Evans has them in his pocket. Uh, but now that you know that Alliance is involved, it is entirely possible that they have a contract with the Corp. Then again, according to Evans from the recording, it's the Viper's job to sit on the shipment. Which means it would make more sense that Evans is outsourcing what he's supposed to be doing to some other poor saps. Can we be finding that out? I don't think we have got a way to do that. But you do know that every Tuesday and Thursday at midnight, some Virid Vipers turn up in their green lowriders, collect the shipment, and take it onwards to where it's supposed to be. Which means, at the very least, if you get one of those cars, you can get into the place without arousing suspicion. Hey, what you do once you're in there. Here. Yeah, two gang jackets. And what you do once you're in there, though, that might be something to figure out on the fly. You might have to wing that part of it. Mm. Yeah. If the sec ops be under alliance, and then we could try turning them by having a couple alliance and suits show up saying that they're terminating the contract with Evans due to his betrayal. You glad to order the like anybody, to clean sounds up. Sounds like anybody who wants to do that is going to get terminated themselves by Evans. That's the problem. If he's paying the sec ops, they'll be like, oh, eh, no. <sighs> but it'll be a way to get the sec ops a-firing on the Vipers if Alliance has got them and through them for employing. But either way, we do need be needing one of those cars. Go ahead, Kitty. Roll for me a d20. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Natural one. Natural one. I'll allow something to happen, but there will be a cost. So. You start to call the group into a huddle to discuss how you're going to get one of these Viper's cars. When Paradigm, who's peering out of the doorway down the alleyway, chuckles to himself. He beckons you over and points. At the end of the alleyway... They rolled up in a car, didn't they? That rolls past the clinic. Oh. And in the mouth of the alleyway that opens into the street behind the clinic. There's a green Viper's low rider parked on the curb. They did indeed roll up in a car. Mm. However, oh, hey. because you rolled the one, they did at least bother to lock their car and probably secured it electronically as well. Of course, it'll be tied to the RCDs, which they need to be conscious to use, and this guy ain't coming back anytime soon. Gosh! Yeah. Secure it electronically. <laughs> Kitty slides her eyes toward Ghost. You know, mismatched face kind of rippling bit. You step out into the alleyway, Ghost, and Kitty points to the low rider parked on the curb, the mouth of the alleyway. Are you game? Last time you did this, you got a nosebleed for your trouble.
Yeah, I am. Go ahead. Make me a knowledge technology check, and I'm asking for a 15. I'm going to glitch that down. Yep, glitch that 11. down to 11. Good idea. And it's... Oh, well, that wasn't necessary. I got nat 15. Nat 15. Um, which means uh, it's a 19. You didn't know. You didn't know. That's all right. That's all right. You look at it. You look back at Kitty, and you wink. Child's play. And then you mash the enter key on your cyber deck. There's silence for just a few seconds. Jonathan, you're at the ready. You've got your hand already in your pocket, ready to pull out a tissue and an injector of red juice for when Ghost inevitably starts gushing blood out of her nostrils. But then the headlights of the car turn on. You hear the click as the doors unlock. Nice. And that's where we'll leave this week's session. <laughs> you've sec- you've found out where the drug den is, and you've secured a way of getting inside. It'll get you through the gates, get you onto the premises. What you do from there, though, you're still yet to figure out. Twelve renter cops. Plus Evans, plus whatever else, whatever other security measures the Virid Vipers have seen fit to have laying in wait. You have a car ride to think about it. Everyone may go ahead and roll their glitches to see how many they recover. Ooh. Remind me, you just roll the max so, that you have. So roll whatever your class's glitch die is, and you recover right. that many glitches. Back to full. Okay. I only used one, and I have a D2. I used three, I rolled three. Lovely. Oh, I didn't write that down. Hang on, let me... Um... Uh, so for Burned Hacker, it is... Glitch die is D2. So it's just a D2 for you. Yep, um... I got a two. Two, so two glitches back. And I would like, and you may as well do it, Ash, since you're the last one I spoke to, go ahead, roll a mm-hmm. D12 for me. That's a nine. A nine. No miserable headline occurs today. Mm. Perhaps one will rear its head after you finish the job. What's the threshold for that again? So you roll a one on a D12. And a miserable headline will occur. But you've been lucky so far. Remember, seven miserable headlines in a row, and the simulation comes to an end. Okay, that could take quite a while, all right. Yeah. 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 Yep. Uh, I don't suppose we could quickly rifle through the two game members' pockets before we leave. Yeah, go ahead. I would like you... We are taking their jackets. Yeah, you are taking their jackets. So you slip their jackets on and... They're a bit tight in places, a bit baggy in others, but if someone's just peering through the window of a car, it should be relatively fine. Go ahead for me, Paradigm, and roll me a d6. And I will also roll one. A one. A one. So in the first jacket... Ah! You pull your hand out of the pocket. There's a broken shiv in there. You take one point of damage. Kitty, go ahead, roll me a d6, and I'll roll another one. All right. See what we are got one here. That's a five. That's a five. Now, this one, this one is interesting. Small folded piece of synth paper fish it out of the pocket, unfold it, and Dr. Tate's face in a black and white photograph smiles back up at you. Typed above, contract, 1,000 creds. Mm. He's racking up quite a bounty. 
they're low balling him actually, knowing what knowing that Brian's in front of them and anything coming his way. But you know, they might not. Yeah. Well, mm. these gang goons seem to be the bottom of the pile anyway, so <laughs> Well, just one of many questions we might answer next week. When you arrive at the location and infiltrate the Viper drug den. We had a dungeon last week. This one's bigger. This one has a lot more dangerous stuff. So be prepared. 